You've played deck builders that have you upgrading cards, but how many of them showcase your protagonist lovingly admiring their new glowing card in full 3D glory? Johanne de Parhalian does not look or sound like conventional deck builders. Its origins as a multimedia anime IP give it different priorities than other card systems, and that's its best and worst quality. You get a lively cast that bounds onto the screen mid-combat, you get an action camera that showcases your card duels in dynamic ways, you even have some minor Yu-Gi-Oh influence. The cards are not some abstraction, but they literally exist in the world, and your hero draws and plays them with appropriately dramatic key posing. Yet these presentation flares often feel like they're the game, rather than supporting one. The deck building gameplay itself is a near one-to-one -one recreation of the genre's patron saint Slay the Spire, but it fails to copy the build diversity and tight balance that was core to that experience. It leaves Yohane feeling like model viewing software with a deck building component, rather than a worthwhile anime card game in its own right. <laughs> Yohane is a game that you beat. Though there's technically an infinitely playable deck builder post game, there's a very discreet final boss and credit roll moment somewhere around the 6 hour mark. The challenges on the path to those credits aren't curated enough to be a satisfying campaign though. It takes a single roguelike run and chops it into pieces to sell the illusion of length. If you imagine a conventional roguelike with 3 acts and a smaller 4th boss act, Yohane's campaign consists of doing act 1, then starting a new run to do acts 1 and 2, then a new run to do acts 1 and 2 and 3, etc. It retreads so much of the same ground, and for something so short it stings a little harder. That length would have been easier to swallow if the card battles were more robust and the meta progression more compelling. Or even if it just tied those duels back to interesting antagonists. Yohane conveniently leans on an inverted bad guy setup where all the major enemy bosses are mirror world flips of our heroes, rather than unique characters that could have taken advantage of the tangible 3D space and narrative focus that Yohane's style affords them. There's still a feel good story here, it's just too predictable and too uneventful to carry the modest deck building components for all but the largest fans of the property. In each run you start with a basic assortment of simple strike and defense cards, one card unique to one of the two classes, and a starting charm, a permanent run wide bonus, in alignment to the costume you're wearing. The charms are rarely a tactical needle mover. You easily exceed 20 or more in a given run, and they almost always give minor incremental bonuses you can ignore, rather than anything you can shape a strategy around. Their relative insignificance removes an entire axiom of decision making that's present in the games that Yohane is borrowing from. The actual deck building and cards themselves are pretty comparable to the genre standard. You've got balanced builds, discard builds, you've got your shield slam builds, and a small handful of others. There's nothing wrong with any of them, and yet there's nothing all that right or especially interesting with them either. It's just the most vanilla implementation of one of these things, and for me, it doesn't clear the depth or breadth threshold I need for something so basic to pull me away from the games it's evoking. Even the summoning system, where you bring in Yohane's friends to give you mid-fight boons, are just consumables under another name. They serve the same short-term function, they're acquired in the same way, randomly mid-run, and they're not strong or consistent enough to alter build strategy despite how visually iconic and cool they are. The meta progression stinks too. Your cross-run currency is pulled in a lot of directions, and a lot of those directions are boring. The chance for higher complexity and more interesting cards dropping in your future runs is something you must purchase rather than automatically acquiring. In other words, you need to buy the fun parts. But those fun purchases are in competition with basic health upgrades that you have to reacquire for each build independently by the way, and even the costumes. I thought half the appeal of this game would be the dress up, and yet their prohibitive cost makes them more of a post game treat rather than something you can efficiently buy along the way, unless you're okay with sacrificing builds and power for them. It's a shame that nothing on the gameplay front resonated with me because there's so much about this concept I enjoy. Slay the Spire at home isn't such a bad idea when home is this comfy little anime village. The characters are expressive and lively during the card encounters, and it's fun to just stare at your menu home base and watch the camera pan around your characters, friends, and acquired costumes. Yet the actual game here is too shallow and its progression too dull that it makes the 6 hour duration feel painfully long. Yohane the Parhelion, Numazu and the Mirage is a minimum viable deck builder buttressing an animation showcase. Those animations do provide the title with a flair and a beauty this genre seldom gets, but they don't salvage its uninteresting card system and stretched campaign. 
those seeking to combine their love of this property and their love of deck builders would be better served by watching the anime on a second monitor while playing anything else.